How's it going, everybody? It's Yong here, and welcome to a Metal Gear Solid 5 news update and analysis. The following information comes from a book titled The Art of Metal Gear Solid 5. Ahead of its November 15th, 2016 release date, a number of sources have taken to posting pictures of some of the art book's pages online for public viewing. Unsurprisingly, these are beautiful to look at, particularly the one showing the unrealized Mission 51 Kingdom of the Flies. But the one page that will probably intrigue you the most is this one right here, which shows us a character artwork of a grown-up Chico, one that unfortunately was unused for the final version of Phantom Pain. But at least we now know that at some point in the game's development, Kojima did play around with the idea of bringing Chico back after Ground Zero's catastrophic ending. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, Kojima decided it was better to kill the character off and continue the story without him. I would be lying if I said I wasn't a little disappointed with the decision to scrap this. While I'm sure Kojima had his reasons, just look at this shit. This character design looks amazing. Oh well, it is what it is. The least I can do is analyze these artworks and try to formulate the kind of story Kojima had in mind for adult Chico before killing him off outright. The first thing I would like to draw your attention to is this line sketch on the top left corner, which gives us a good look at Chico's adult mature face. He was around 13 years old during the events of Ground Zeroes, so add 9 years to that and this grown up Chico would have to be around 22 years old. The first thing that immediately stood out to me about this character design was the disfigured face. This tells us that had Chico survived the chopper crash during the events of Ground Zeroes, he would have ended up with a lot of physical injuries, particularly this big chunk of flesh that seems to have been torn off on the right side of his face, which creates an effect that is somewhat reminiscent of Harvey Dent from Nolan's Dark Knight. Now, if we pan towards the right and look at these colored close-ups of the character, it's possible to make out the color of his skin, and judging by the brown color with splotches of a fleshy red, it could very well be that a significant portion of his face would have been burned as well. And it's not just physical injuries that these character artworks are evoking, I'm also seeing a lot of psychological damage underneath the hood. I get the feeling that had adult Chico survived the helicopter crash from Ground Zeroes, he would have probably led a grim and miserable life throughout the nine years leading up to Phantom Pain. Physical deformities aside, I can only imagine the kind of psychological trauma that he was affected by. Not only did he live through hell on earth in Camp Omega, and was forced to witness someone he cared for go through worse, he eventually caved under pain and pressure and provided the enemy intel that proved pivotal in the annihilation of MSF. So combine the physical and psychological torture he went through at Camp Omega, the horrors he witnessed Paz go through, the trauma he suffered from the brutal attack on Mother Base, and the guilt he would have felt thereafter for the role he played in MSF's downfall and the deaths of his comrades, and it's hardly surprising that the spirited 13-year-old kid would have grown up to become a tortured shadow of his former self. This notion of a tortured adult Chico can be further corroborated by his overall character design. One of Phantom Pain's most important themes is the idea of men becoming demons. This is why Kojima gave Metal Gear Solid V the codename Project Ogre, and why he went out of his way to physically manifest demonic features onto characters such as Venom Snake, like the debris on his forehead that is meant to look like the Devil's Horn, which grows bigger the more players kill, the dangling strap on his back that is meant to look like the Devil's tail, and the occasional blood smear that further enhances the demon motif. Based on what I'm seeing in this concept artwork, it looks like Kojima had similar plans for adult Chico, but whereas Venom Snake was designed to look like the devil from Western culture, Chico was designed to look like a devil from Eastern culture. There is little doubt in my mind that adult Chico was designed to look like an Oni, the devil from Japanese folklore. Not only is Chico wearing all red in the same manner that Onis are often depicted as having red skin, he's also got the same deranged white eyes and widely parted lips that exude something akin to a malignant smile. Not only does this design look utterly badass, but I also think it makes a lot of sense. Aside from further highlighting the theme that men become demons, it would have also served as a symbolism for the corruption that adult Chico likely suffered as a result of the physical and psychological trauma from nine years ago, not to mention the guilt that he would have had to carry with him the whole time. 
All right, now that we have analyzed Adult Chico's general appearance, let's dive into some of the specifics. As I mentioned before, he's wearing all red, but more specifically, he seems to be wearing a hooded red raincoat and a red scarf on top of that. Notice how the coat is a slightly darker shade of red, hoodie and everything, while the layer on top of that, the poncho-like scarf, is a slightly brighter shade. So it's two pieces. On the back of the red coat, you will find markings that are somewhat reminiscent of the ones found on the back of Eli's jacket, except instead of featuring the English text for Never Be Game Over, the Japanese text for Liquid People, and a drawing of a pig boss, it's got a crudely painted peace sign. The way I look at this is that all the red represents the demon side of Chico, while the crude white peace sign represents his real self, with the crude nature of the painting possibly symbolizing his descent to madness. Something else that I notice is that it seems as though the peace sign might be fading little by little, as if the Oni's red skin is slowly taking over its host, so perhaps this further symbolizes how Chico is being consumed by his demon self. There is also one last symbolism to adult Chico's outfit, and this one might be the most important of them all. For Metal Gear veterans out there, doesn't Chico's outfit seem familiar to you? It should, because the red coat he's wearing is near identical to the one that Paz Ortega wore in the beginning of Peace Walker. This is really significant. It's no secret that Chico came to develop feelings for Paz, going as far as attempting to rescue her from Camp Omega by himself, despite knowing that she had been working for Cypher all along. But that only resulted in him making things worse. He got captured, he was tortured, he witnessed horrible things done to Paz, and he was used by Skullface to execute his assault on MSF, all of which culminated to not only the downfall of MSF, but also Paz's death, which Chico witnessed firsthand when he saw her throw herself off the helicopter, believing there was another bomb inside of her. So I can only imagine that had Chico survived Ground Zeroes, his biggest source of regret and guilt would have been the thought that he might as well have killed Paz himself by getting caught in Camp Omega, which started Ground Zeroes' catastrophic chain of events. I believe his guilt for having played a key role in the death of this person he arguably loved would have been the thing that sent him over the edge and sparked the beginning of his descent to madness. At least, that's what I see when I look at this concept art. With the way adult Chico is wearing a red coat reminiscent of one that Paz wore once upon a time, and the way it's crudely marked with a peace sign on the back, I see a man who is constantly reminding himself of what he did and what he lost. If you recall, Kazuhira Miller did something similar in Phantom Pain. He opted against equipping his lost limbs with prosthetics so that his Phantom Pain can be a constant reminder of what he lost, thereby fueling his thirst for revenge. I don't think it's far-fetched to assume that we're seeing something similar here, except for Chico, his wouldn't be a fuel for revenge. It would be self-inflicted punishment, his own eternal atonement, and his eternal phantom pain. As if the red jacket wasn't enough of a reminder of the past, something else that I spotted is what looks to be headphones coming down from Chico's ears and into a ripped part of his coat. Very reminiscent of Ground Zero's intro cutscene, wouldn't you say? You can even see in the concept art how the cable loops upwards towards his chest, which is where Chico's 3.5mm headphone jack resides. Come on, Chico. Where's your courage? So again, this might be further indication that Chico is constantly reminding himself of the past, unable to move on from his guilt, and descending further and further into hell. The headphone cables can also be seen clearly in these close-ups, and then below that is a rough sketch by Yoji Shinkawa, where we can see headphone cables running down from Chico's ears into his body and then looping upwards towards the chest region. While we're on this image, something interesting I would like to point out is this picture of a butterfly. Above that is an arrow pointing towards the character's outfit, with Japanese text that translates to red coat, according to my translator, Claude Smith of Heavensfield.com. I'm not sure if the butterfly was just some random doodle, or if this was Shinkawa's way of reminding himself that the butterfly motif would somehow come into play here. Maybe the original idea was to have the image of a butterfly on the back of the coat instead of a peace sign. After all, in some cases, butterflies do symbolize peace, and in other cases, butterflies symbolize metamorphosis by overcoming struggles, like how a butterfly must struggle its way out of its cocoon to flourish. Perhaps the butterfly motif was meant to symbolize both peace and struggle for adult Chico. Moving on, let's take a look at some of the weapons that he's wielding. On his right hand is what looks to be a long leather strap wrapped around his arm, with a large fish hook attached at the end. 
Very interesting weapon. I'm assuming this is something he would swing around skillfully and whatnot. Would have loved to see it in action. Something worth pointing out is that the fish hook further highlights the Moby Dick motif that permeates throughout Phantom Pain. Perhaps Chica was also meant to have characteristics of the novel's protagonist, Ahab, who also descends further and further into madness in his obsession to hunt down Moby Dick. And perhaps what Moby Dick is to Ahab, guilt is to Chico, this giant beast that he is in constant struggle with. Towards his left side are some conventional weapons. This one here is a tomahawk, as labeled in the Japanese text on the bottom left here, according to Claude Smith. Next to that is what looks to be some kind of cleaver sword or a cleaver-shaped machete. The sketch on the right here simply labels it Black Blade. You can also see how the weapon looks like sheathed down here below. Last but not least for adult Chico's weapons is this combat knife. and You can see it tucked away in a holster on his left ankle. Another look at the knife can be found towards the bottom here. So yeah, this guy is definitely armed to the teeth, which gives me the impression that Kojima's intention was probably to make him a boss battle. Now I'm not sure if you noticed, but every weapon that this character wields is strictly melee, and they are all either pointy or sharp. You know what this means, right? I think we're looking at who was supposed to be Metal Gear Solid V's very own swordsman, what the Black Ninja was to Metal Gear 2, what Gray Fox was to Metal Gear Solid, what Olga was to Metal Gear Solid 2, and what Raiden was to Metal Gear Solid 4. I think Adult Chico was supposed to be to Metal Gear Solid 5. Hell, one of his designs that Shinkawa came up with even resembles Null from Portable Ops and wields his blade backhanded like Gray Fox occasionally does. Weapon choices and appearances aside, another reason why I believe Adult Chico was meant to fill the role of Metal Gear Solid 5 Swordsman is because of his backstory. If you think about it, Chico's backstory follows the same beats and tropes as other swordsmen in the series. They all grew up as child soldiers. They survived traumatizing events that forever scarred them both physically and psychologically. They were eventually subjected to experiments, and all of that eventually culminated into them becoming a less-than-human, unhinged super-soldier. It happened to Kyle Schneider, to Frank Yeager, and to Raiden, and it seems as though Kojima had a similar path in mind for Chico. Peace Walker established that he grew up as a child soldier. Ground Zeroes presented his traumatic event, and it looks like Phantom Pain was originally intended to show just how he was physically and psychologically scarred, how he came to be experimented upon, and how he transformed into an unhinged super soldier swordsman. As far as the experimentation stage of his transformation goes, one possibility is that Chico could have ended up being a subject of Skullface's parasite unit experiment. One big piece of evidence for this is the black blade that Chico is wielding here. Notice how it's very similar to the blade used by the male skulls in Phantom Pain. Before you write this off as coincidence, let me point out that there is a similar connection between the female skulls and Quiet. After Quiet was mortally wounded, she was subjected to parasite treatment, after which she gained new abilities and began wielding a sniper rifle, the same weapon that the female skulls use. So in the same manner that Quiet is essentially a more human version of a female skull, what if Adult Chico was intended to be a more human version of a male skull? If that were to be the case, one possible scenario is that Kojima played around with the idea of Chico's body being recovered by the XOF unit after the assault on Mother Base and brought to Skullface. Then, throughout the nine years leading to Phantom Pain, I'm thinking that Skullface would have used Chico as a guinea pig for his parasite experiments, with Chico eventually becoming the first successful Skull unit prototype, which might be another possible explanation for his unnatural skin color in the concept art. And throughout these experiments, I'm sure Skullface would have messed with his psyche, whether it be through brainwashing or by somehow using his guilt to manipulate him, driving him further and further into an unhinged state of mind. After all, if there is one thing that Ground Zeroes proved is that Skullface knows how to make a puppet out of Chico, so it's not unlikely to think that this could have carried on in Phantom Pain. Not to mention that the concept art shows that Chico is wearing headphones like he did during his captivity in Camp Omega, further suggesting that some kind of connection between adult Chico and Skullface might have been in the works at some point. And you know, the more I think about it, the more I feel like that whole Chico with the headphones and the hole on his chest was meant to be some kind of setup for adult Chico in Phantom Pain, but it looks like that didn't end up panning out. But anyway, with this setup in place, I believe players would have eventually encountered the adult, parasite-infected, brainwashed, deranged swordsman Chico in an awesome boss battle, where we would have the choice of either killing him or bringing him back to base in hopes to rehabilitate him. 
and maybe even turn him into a support buddy, similarly to how Quiet's boss battle played out. In such a case, killing Chico wouldn't conflict with a timeline, as he's never referenced in the Solid Snake saga, while keeping him alive could serve as an opportunity to develop his character and see his story of guilt, atonement, and redemption play out, similarly to how rescuing Quiet leads to opportunities to develop her character. So along with being Metal Gear Solid 5's version of Grey Fox or Raiden, it seems to me as though adult Chico was intended to be something akin to a male counterpart to Quiet, with Quiet being the more human female skull and Chico being the more human male skull. Now, I've talked a lot about adult Chico similarities to other swordsmen in the Metal Gear series, but there also seem to be many unique aspects to him. For one, these images show that he is not your typical cyborg ninja like the Black Ninja, Grey Fox, Olga, and Raiden. Whereas their enhancements were a result of robotics and genetics, Adult Chico's enhancements could be biological, namely the vocal parasites. Adult Chico doesn't really evoke the appearance of a ninja either, but rather something closer to a demonic berserker-style swordsman, maybe something along the lines of a corrupted samurai, whose masks, by the way, resemble the face of an oni, like Adult Chico's face. Aesthetics aside, there are also little nuances in Chico's character arc. I mean, sure, words like guilt, atonement, and redemption are all ones you could associate with Grey Fox's story as well, if you think about it. But Chico's dynamic with Paz and the way he carries her memory with him through his outfit as a phantom pain and reminder of what he did and what he lost adds a unique flavor, in my opinion. All in all, I think Adult Chico could have been a perfect combination of both a familiar homage to Metal Gear's swordsman tradition while still giving us something uniquely compelling. Unfortunately, we have to accept the reality that none of what we're seeing here made it past the concept stages, which is why all I can do is use my own analysis and imagination to construct some semblance of a story. Keep in mind that most of what I spouted in this video is theory and speculation. In the end, we may never know what Kojima had in mind for adult Chico before scrapping the character, but I still deem it a blessing that we get to see this artwork at all, which could have easily been archived and never made public. And hey, it's more awesome Yoji Shinkawa artwork, so what's there not to like? Admittedly, my mind is still running wild from all the unrealized potential and possibilities of this version of adult Chico, but it is what it is. What are your thoughts about this concept art of Adult Chico? Would you have liked to see him come to life in Phantom Pain? If so, do you agree with my analysis of how his story might have played out, or do you have any ideas of your own you'd like to share? Let us know in the comments below, and to be further updated on all things Metal Gear, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah! I'll see you guys next time! Young out! <laughs>